there is absolutely nothing happy about this story. My goodness. What's going on you guys? James here with another real review and today I'm talking all about the new Netflix original film All Day in a Night directed by Joe Robert Cole starring Yaya Abdul-Mateen, Jeffrey Wright, and Ashton Sanders. You might know him from Moonlight, fantastic actor, and we'll get into why he works really well in this film. Now before I tell you what I like and what I didn't really like about All Day and a Night, if this is your first time here at the channel, welcome to Real James. Now if you're wondering who that is, that's me, and I love talking all about movies. So if you like what you hear and what you see, go ahead and hit the big red button below and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to tap on that bell right next to it just to stay up to date with anything new. This weekend you're not going to want to miss anything on the channel. I'm talking about a classic film, Raging Bull, as we start our Real Rewind series where I kind of take a look back at old films that I've never seen before or I haven't seen in a very long time. I'm also looking forward to starting that Netflix original series Hollywood which is uh, by showrunner Ryan Murphy. You might know him from a certain show called Glee. Also don't forget to like this video, share it, and get active in the comments below. Let me know what you think about all day and the night. There's also a poll right at the top that's going to ask you if you're going to watch this movie this weekend. Okay, so no more talking. Let's get into what I liked about all day and the night. The story takes place in Oakland, California and really is a snapshot of a pretty tragic story that centers around Jakor, who is played by Ashton Sanders. He grows up with two friends, Lamarck and TQ, one of them serving in the military and TQ being the one that unfortunately gets Jakor into a ton of trouble, whether it be with drugs, robbery, or murder. So it gets really intense very quickly. All the while, Jakor, you start to learn a little bit about him. He has to deal with basically being raised by his mother, not much his father, because his father is serving a life sentence and eventually gets into too much trouble trouble, whether it be with selling drugs or using them. So as you can tell, Jakor's life is really in a whirlwind and he is trying to break the mold. And I won't tell you what happens in that third act, but the movie tells you pretty early on because what it does is it plays with chronological order in a weird way. So it starts off in the present, Jakor in prison, and then it shows you a little bit more about Jakor's life through flashbacks. And if you're wondering about Yaya Abdul-Mateen, yes, he comes later on in the movie and plays a more of a supporting role rather than a main role. You really only see Ashton Sanders, Isaiah John, and Jeffrey Wright throughout most of the film. So let's start with what I really liked about All Day and a Night, and that starts with Ashton Sanders. Now he fits this role perfectly, and not only that, he's a great actor. Like, he definitely doesn't undersell the role that he's playing, and Joe Robert Cole knows how to direct him pretty perfectly, to be honest with you. I don't see anyone else doing as well as Ashton Sanders in this role. Loved him in Moonlight. He was good in The Equalizer too. so you start to see different uh, characteristics come out of Ashton Sanders in this film. He starts off with someone who has a little bit of trepidation about going into this world that unfortunately his father really didn't help him get out of, even though, you know, the movie tries to tell you otherwise. But Ashton Sanders is really solid in this role and I really love that they casted him in this movie. Now we just talked about the weird time telling in this story, how it starts off in the present then goes in the past. I like that they actually used flashbacks to tell more about Jakor's present story. That was really neat and it was definitely something that Joe Robert Cole I guess had from the jump because you don't just make these changes last minute. I do like that he wrote the movie this way, although there are some pros and cons. I kind of wish we saw more of that relationship building in prison with Jakor and his father, JD, a little bit earlier on. We get that too late in the film, and then that third act it really just drags, but trust me, we're going to talk about that later. And the biggest question here for me, because the trailer shows Jeffrey Wright in a role that is not generally his role to play and he plays these awesome roles in Casino Royale, Westworld, we've never seen him in a role quite like this. He plays this very over the top gangster at home and it's definitely different. Now I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I think that he actually plays the role better than the trailer suggests. To me, he was one of the more solid pillars in this movie and I like the relationship that he's building with Jakor and then unfortunately the relationship kind of goes sour and you start to learn a little bit more about him while he's serving his life sentence alongside his son it's a very very tragic story and that's a good lead into the next thing i liked about all day and a night is that it doesn't hold back from what it really is it's not trying to add levity and you're not going to find humor in this movie like even the jokes that the characters made you knew weren't funny because it's going to be followed up with something very serious so joe robert cole knew what he was doing in the film and he knew that he had a tone he wanted to achieve and I think he did that but the question is did that tone become a little too much and that really is where the film starts to 
get into the negatives for me is that the story is a little too monotonous and it really does go in circles. Sometimes it feels like you just started listening to the same track over and over again and i get that's what joe robert cole was trying to achieve but it's not very enjoyable as a viewer i've seen some films that are very tragic you know like that really have no resolution at the end however in this movie you kind of get into this weird area where there's a lot of exposition through dialogue and then you start to see and pick out different points where the script is a little too over dramatized like there's an event in the shoe store where jacor works as a i think a part-time job if anything and unfortunately uh he overhears a conversation where this white woman is talking crazy like she's talking nonsense and i get that you know stuff like that happens in real life but in the movie it felt way too heavy-handed it was much too on the nose and then you start to get into this area where you pick out more of that because the movie just keeps going on and on and on it's the same event over and over again just in a different setting that's an issue for me and then the length of the film is incredibly noticeable i mean especially in the middle of the movie in the second act you start to see that the story's building up to something and then when you're leaving that second act and getting into what is supposed to be a very impacting third act it doesn't hit for me at all. It's like the story just sort of lingers after a while and it's sitting on your palate and unfortunately it just doesn't leave the greatest taste and it's not supposed to. This Again, this is a tragic story, but the problem is you don't necessarily feel like the ride was worth it all along. So do I think it's a crime drama that is really worth sitting down for and spending a couple hours out of your day? If you want pretty good performances, you're gonna get that, but you don't come to this movie and unfortunately get the story that you think you're going to get. That's okay because expectations are made to be broken, but this was a broken expectation in almost the worst way. All Day and a Night is a movie that tries to sort of give you the idea and the illustration of Jacor's life, and we get it, we get it, but after every single big event, whether it be a flashback or a present day sequence, you just continue to tell yourself, yes, I understand, where is the next step coming? And the story doesn't necessarily progress quickly, and that's okay but the problem is it lingers and doesn't give you much to work with. So yes, do I think there's a better film within this movie? Absolutely, like the foundation is there. I just think that the writing is a little weak and unfortunately I don't buy a lot of the dialogue here and it just lingers. It lasts forever and ever and ever and when I was getting into that last 30 minute stretch, I thought to myself, okay, is this film going to end anytime soon? Because I have a pretty clear understanding of where it's going. And sometimes that's just the problem when you play with present day and then flashback sequences because you already know where your main character's gonna end up. So yeah, All Day and a Night, I would say is like in that two and a half star range for me, but it's nothing that you're gonna walk away from and say, man, these performances were awful. Because like I said, Ashton Sanders, Jeffrey Wright, they're pretty great in this film. So if you're coming to it for them, you're gonna find enjoyment out of it. But for me, as an overall movie, it just failed to hit the mark. Alrighty, you guys. Well, there you have it. That's my review of All Day and a Night. I want to know what you guys think of the film. Go ahead and sound off in the comments below. Was I wrong or was I right? And also, don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends, and hit the big red button below. Tap on the bell right next to it just to stay up to date with a couple of videos we're dropping this weekend. Alrighty, you guys. I'm going to go watch some more new releases on Netflix. So again, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you at the next screening.